Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jamie, your crafty DIY guy, and I'm back. I am super excited about today's video. Not only is this a Father's Day DIY, but it's also a collaboration video. And I'm so excited because I really, really love the person I'm collaborating with. Now, the cool thing about the Father's Day ideas that are in this video is they really are super versatile. They're not just for dads. They're just not for, you know, father, daddy, papa, whatever you call them. It literally could go for your own craft space or your own projects that you want to do for yourself. Be selfish. It's okay. I'm telling you, it's fine. As a matter of fact, I'm not a dad, as we all know. And all of my projects I'm using currently in my space, like these are functional, usable projects, which are even better in my eyes. Um, the collaboration though, that's pretty cool. Now, if you know Nicole from The Week's Nest, you know that her channel is all about DIY and home decor. She has great boho, she has great farmhouse, she has great modern farmhouse, she has some just modern, she has some really cool ideas. And uh, one of these ideas actually was kind of inspired by her. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about more, uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about her channel. And then uh, we're gonna get into crafting, cre crafting. Creafting, I just made a new word, creafting. It's when you create and you craft, creafting. So blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell you about her channel and then I'm gonna include the link to her video down below and we are going to get creafting. As I mentioned, Nicole's channel is The Week's Nest and she is everything DIY and home decor. She literally has everything from modern farmhouse design to farmhouse design easy Dollar Tree crafts, summer ideas, boho. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and this is why I totally gravitated and love her channel. Her Instagram is equally as informative, great crafting ideas, some insight into her family and to her personal life, and I will include a link to both her YouTube channel, her Instagram, and of course, our collaboration video below. All right, everyone, for our first project, we are going to take some nautical rope. Mine happens to be this big bundle that I picked up at Amazon for, I think it was around five or six dollars. You could certainly use Dollar Tree nautical rope for this. And then also you're gonna grab one of these shallow garden bowls that I picked up in the kind of garden section at Dollar Tree where they have the plants and the succulents and stuff. And then through the magic of YouTube, you're going to paint your bowl black like I did here. I just used a Rust-Oleum flat black paint. And then you're going to take your rope and you're going to coil it on the inside. So what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing a scrap piece of cardboard. I got my finger protectors because I am notoriously known for burning my fingers. And uh, I am just going to create a coil um, just using some glue and just kind of working it around. I will say that this rope from Amazon is definitely stiffer and it's harder to work with, especially when you're first starting your kind of disc or your, your kind of circle coil here. So um, you'll use a lot of glue definitely in the beginning. And then as it starts to get larger and as it starts to hold together, you'll see that it uh, comes together certainly a lot easier. And I will say those finger protectors, those pretty pink finger protectors, man, did they make a difference because it saved my fingertips for sure. Now, after you've got a disc that's about, about this big, um, I, I don't know how big this is. It will cover the bottom of the bowl, though. You'll see in just a minute. Then you can go ahead and just add some hot glue to the back of the rope and then just glue this directly down to your bowl. Um, definitely center it and make sure that it's in there. Mine was not perfectly centered when I ended up gluing it down, but, you know, hey. It's a handmade craft, right? That's just the way it happens sometimes. So as you can see, I'm putting a generous amount of my hot glue on there. And then I am literally just going to stick this down to the center of my bowl. And then I'm going to finish wrapping about halfway up with the nautical rope all around the bowl until I get, um, I would say, kind of where that lip or that uh, kind of uh, straighter edge of the round bowl, if that's making sense starts to kind of uh, flatten. So hopefully that makes sense in the picture below. Then after everything dries, this becomes the ultimate dad bowl. You can throw your wallet down, throw your keys down, you can put it on the coffee table. It's got a really cool kind of industrial vibe look and I really, really like this. 
And for our next project, we're going to call this Dad's uh, Paint Station. And uh, what I like about this is you're going to grab two of these Dollar Tree trays. I grabbed the two that were just kind of more tray looking, I guess you could say. And then I grabbed some of these paint sticks that I picked up when I went to Home Depot. And then some Gorilla wood glue. I love this. And then a wooden skewer. Anytime I'm using Gorilla wood glue, I always put the glue on with a skewer skewer um, because it's such a big bottle and I can be a little heavy-handed it's just a good tip for me now if you see this kind of rounded edge on your paint sticks make sure that all of those are painting in the same direction and preferably pointing down so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stick the uh, stick uh, right on the corner of the wooden tray and I'm going to repeat that on all four sides now I absolutely love these spring-loaded clamps or these clips that they sell at Dollar Tree. These things are fantastic. If you can get your hands on these, they're in the hardware department, grab these. They have smaller pink versions that you'll see that I also have from the Crafter Square section, but these larger red ones are fantastic. Go ahead and wipe away any of the excess glue and then just repeat this on all four sides of the top part of your uh, paint tower and it will look like this so you're going to let everything dry and then once that's dry you'll repeat this uh, process kind of for the lower part of your paint tray so what we're going to do is we're going to take our other dollar tree tray and remember how i recommended that you take all of those um kind of uh, rounded edges or that that little divot i don't know what it's called in the paint stick itself that is where you're going to line up your lower tray it's going to give you a little lift off of the bottom like kind of giving you a little feet on the bottom of the tray and uh, you're going to go ahead and just repeat the same process with the glue this is a little harder and this is also where the skewer really helps because you can get into that kind of a tighter edge and then again i'm going to uh, go ahead and glue this together with the gorilla wood glue and then i'm simply going to take another one of those clips and hold it into place and then repeat it on the other three sides of the lower part of our uh, i'm calling it the dad's paint tray i guess so after everything has dried and it is set up nicely, you can then remove your clips. And then what you want to do is kind of give your legs almost like a three-dimensional look, I, I guess. And uh, So you'll go ahead and you'll take your paint sticks and then apply it to the front side of your trays. Again, using the skewer, a little bit of uh, the Gorilla Glue, and you can see I'm still even pretty heavy-handed with it. But uh, so you'll repeat this and you'll do this on all four corners of your paint tower. And um, it will kind of look like this on the one side. And then you'll um, just keep working all the way around until you've got the other sides or all four sides kind of covered with that secondary stick so hopefully the visuals are more um or easier to understand because clearly my voice is not working very well tonight <laughs> After everything dried, I took it outside and I used my Rust-Oleum hammered silver spray paint, which I absolutely love. And I gave everything, I would say, about one and a half coatings, maybe. This wood took the spray paint really, really well. And uh, I kind of wanted it to have that old, like, military metal kind of cabinet looking feel to it. And I think that that hammered silver really, really worked well for that. And this is what it looks like on my desk. I mean, I'm not a dad, but I'm gonna be using this for all of my paints. I mean, how cute is that? And it fits perfectly with almost any kind of decor structure. I mean, literally you could paint this any color that you wanted it for me. And for my workshop, it kind of has a very cool industrial vibe. And again, I could see where this would be great in any dad's workshop, I think he'd be proud to store any kind of tools or really any kind of goodies on this. And for our next project, this is actually really, really easy. You're going to take one of these USA 4th of July signs that you can find at Dollar Tree right now. Go ahead and remove these stars and set these aside for future use for another project. They will come off really, really easy. Um, I was able to just kind of use my fingernail to, to pull them off, except for this last one. I almost pulled my fingernail off completely. And uh, then you're going to take this, and even though um, we removed them from that one side, you're actually going to use this 
flat side up. So go ahead and remove all of the twine and then you're gonna take this outside and give it a really good sanding. Um, I happen to have this great electrical sander that I used and what was really great about this is that it annihilated all of that red glitter. So once everything was uh, sanded and I wiped it off, I took everything outside and just used a flat black spray paint. And I didn't completely cover it because I wanted kind of that aged look of that cardboard backing kind of coming through. After everything was dry, then I took my uh, chalk paint here. It's kind of like an off-white color, almost a gray color, and I painted a number on it. And number four is actually the number that is significant to me. And so anytime I'm painting a number, especially using like a squared off brush like this, and uh, I will just go ahead and just paint the number as if that brush was just flowing with the paint. That way it kind of gives me almost like a template, if that makes sense, because then I can go back in and I can easily fill in the lines or, you know, color within the lines and uh, make that number look as, as good as possible. I am not a painter by any means. If I had a giant number four stencil, I would have totally used this. Um, again, the number four is significant to me because that just happens to be a lucky number for me. But think about it. Like if you're if your uh, husband or your dad or maybe your brother, whoever's the dad in the family, maybe they've got four kids or maybe they've got uh, four dogs or <laughs> maybe they've got eight kids. You could really put whatever number you wanted on this and then just to kind of give it that industrial kind of look again i went ahead and put the number symbol down at the bottom of my tag that way um, it would just kind of tie everything together giving it that really cool and industrial vibe then after everything dried i took a piece of nautical rope i used the cloth nautical rope honestly i think i would have liked the regular nautical rope better for it but this happened to be the an extra piece that I had on hand and I'm trying to conserve my supplies as much as possible and not go out a whole lot. So I uh, just strung this up. And then what's great about this tag is it could literally be hanging on a wall. It could hang on a doorway. I mean, there's really lots of different options and very cool uh, things that you can do with this tag. And again, it's just a cool decorative piece, but it's a great way to remind dad of, you know, his responsibilities and how many kids he, he has or dogs or, or cats. He could be a cat dad like I am. And for the next project, you're going to need 10 paint sticks. I was able to pick these up the last time I went to Home Depot. Also a round framed mirror from Dollar Tree. Just take your 10 paint sticks and line them up. Here I've uh, gonna only use eight for the actual frame itself. So I'm wanting to make sure that the 10 that I grabbed are as even as possible. And then the two on the end here, I'm just gonna push those aside and we'll use those for the brace actually on the back side of this frame. I wanted to make sure that my sticks were as straight as possible. So I lined them up along the bottom and then, uh, whoopsie, I uh, took my red ruler at the top and just drew a line across the top there on where I wanted to cut everything. I just took out my pocket knife and just scored each one of the sticks a little bit. And then I was able to use my scissors and just cut right through the sticks pretty easily. Um, I added some hot glue along the sticks for the back side. I did go ahead and just trim these out so they would be the right size. And um, again, I'm just using hot glue for the sake of the video. It dries really fast and it uh, enables me to get this to Nicole on time for our collaboration. And uh, again, I'm putting a pretty generous amount of hot glue on the back there, letting that dry and then flipping it over to get ready to paint. I also went ahead and just added a couple pieces of extra scrap wood to the back of the mirror. That way it would be elevated off the back. I used my Waverly antiquing wax and just covered my base or my frame here with a pretty generous amount of this antiquing wax. And then I did go back through and wipe off any excess after it was done. And finally, for the hanging hardware, I just grabbed a piece of nautical rope and simply just hot glued this to the back of the frame itself. The hot glue will hold this on perfectly fine. It's not very heavy at all. And this is what the finished product looks like hanging up on my board. I absolutely love this. I love the way this modern kind of uh, vibe looks, especially against that 
metal pegboard that I have. You could easily turn this into something beachy. It could be farmhouse, just depending on how you want to paint it. I think there's a lot of really cool versatility to it. And speaking of cool, thank you so much to the Weeks Nest for this collaboration today. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel.